It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. I enjoyed last night the uh, service and God uh, coming and helping us for the service today. Appreciate Brother Wavis coming to be with us and speaking to us here. And speaking to us. Sister Sabrina having words to say here. Give the earnest heed to those things which you have heard, lest at any time you let them slip. That's what Shay was saying. Things can just slip out of your memory. You forget what was said to you. Forget who said it. Forget the feeling. Said if I if I forget the word of the Lord, let my tongue plead to the roof of my mouth. And my right hand forget her coming. Honey. Honey. The ability to work and make. Well, we surely don't want to forget, do we want? God has given us through the years and where he where it came from. She was speaking about uh, out of the heart of man proceeds evil things. You know, and you think, well, that's wars and all the type of sin, but there's evil things that man sought out many inventions. Uh, man has invented so many ways of of well of course all they've invented a lot of gods. And I don't know how many, thousands and thousands, Brother Samson the day, he was saying how many gods there are over there in his country. Man has invented so many things. And it is a shame that men took the words of Christ and invented uh, organizations, invented things, said Christ said yes when he didn't say it. Actually, the Word of God was hid for for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. In a, it was in a written form, but it was in uh, a form of, of uh, Latin that the common people couldn't read. And if they could read it, they they didn't have a copy. You know, I, I, I don't think we value how much it's a copy of the Word of the Lord is worth. If you've never seen it, if you never got to read it, what would you know? What would you know? You just know what somebody told you it said. And the sad thing is, during the dark ages, they were told it said a lot of things that it didn't say. But I appreciate us being able to have the word of the Lord. And then have men of God through the years that have spoken to us, and I agree with Shay. I, I'm not wanting to come up with some some new thing. Uh, I'd like to hold on to what God has given us. Why would I want to hold on to it? Because it's truth, and there's enough truth in it to produce overcomers. And we even know what an overcomer is. Brother right. Don, if you if you didn't know what that term meant. I mean, it, it means nothing to you. But when we hear it, it really means something to us. Brother Ravis talked about that hoarders. It's a disorder. It's a disorder. It's actually a sickness. That uh, I worked in a house one time. I helped a, a boy. He asked me if I'd help him do a uh, install for him in an area place. And I said, yeah, I'll. I'll help you. It's his, it was his neighbor down at, uh, not Matthews, but that little city, uh, Canalu. So we went back in there and they set a nice little home. We went inside and they had boxes, they had stacked, higher than their head. And there was no room to live in the house. You had to turn sideways to, to just get through it. There wasn't an aisle to walk. That was a horror. I don't know what they had in them boxes, but must have been more important than a place to live. <laughs> had a little spot where they could cook food and a little place where they could sit and eat it, I guess. Made it hard work and put in heating and air, I'm telling you that. <laughs> but it is a disorder and it's a sickness. And for the way the sin is a disorder. It's not, God didn't intend for sin to 
to be in this world. God didn't create Adam and Eve in sin. But it was a, they got out of order with God. What Paul said, I'm uh, afraid that you're, you'll be deceived from the simplicity that's in Christ. There's an order that's in Christ. Adam and Eve got out of order with God and a sickness was developed. And it's even, it's a sickness unto death, the death of the soul. Well, we definitely need a healing, don't we? Um, there's a verse that it says uh, that an unclean spirit, when it's gone out of a man, said the house is swept and cleaned and garnished. Well, after that happens, Sister Sabrina, you've got to keep the house clean. <laughs> you've got to keep the evil out that was once inside. It's not enough just to meet God and Him help clean you up. He helped uh, get sin out of your life. When God forgave me of my sin, I had no charge against me at that point. It said, water baptism does now save us, Peter said. Not the, but not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a clear conscience towards God. Water baptism is accompanied with, with repentance and confession. And when that happens, you've you got a clean house all of a sudden. Yes. But that that was causing you to sin before you repented will cause you to sin after you repent. Yes. Therefore, there has to be a battle in it. There's a battle that takes place on the inside uh, for God's children, and we need help. Yes. Sister Robin, we need help. We can't fight for uh, the, the enemy on our own. You look at the, oh, uh, the, the Old Testament, the men and women that loved God, that were faithful to God, they could not battle against sin and win. Every one of them died in sin. So these all died, not having received the promise, but having seen it afar off, Paul said. But when Jesus came, he came more he came to do more than just forgive sins. That's what some people think. He came to forgive sins. That wasn't, that wasn't, he did that, Brother David. But he did much more. He said, when I go away, I'm going to send you another comfort. And it's more than just some, something that comforts you. It gives you power and strength. It helps you in every phase of your life. It's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God's Holy Spirit, you can call it Holy Ghost, you can call it Holy Spirit, whichever one you want to call it, it's the same thing. But he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Dear God, we've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Power has come upon us. Power to live an overcoming life. Power to serve the Lord. Power to learn. Power to be educated, to get knowledge and wisdom and understand that surpasses anything in this world. Man's wisdom is earthly, sensual, and devilish. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceful. Yeah, you, you speak about how we feel peace here. That's wisdom from above. It's first pure. It's peaceable. It's gentle. And it's easy to be entreated. Yes. We need you, Lord. Yes. Yes. We entreat him for it. Lord, we need you. Come and help us. Yes. Come and strengthen us. Just getting the Holy Ghost by itself is not enough either. Yes. Just like being saved is not enough. It's just one more step. One more step on the road to perfection. We need God's assistance. We need for him to tell us what we what we need to do, and then we need his assistance in doing it. Yes. Said, "Oh, if I could only know what God wanted, I'd do it." Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure that you would? Jesus said to James and John. Mother asked if they sit on the right hand and the left. He said, "Can you?" Be baptized with the baptism that I'm to be baptized with. 
And can you drink of the cup that I'm to drink of? They said, we be able. <laughs> well, they were pretty confident. You know, everything was going real good. I'd like to talk to them when they were at the lowest low. And they might have said, well, I'm, I'm not really able. It's going to take him. And it takes the Lord giving us strength. In a time of weakness, we need God. In a time when we're high, we need God. We need Him all the time. We need to recognize we need God. We need His help. We need His assistance. In doing what He did. You mean we got to do what Jesus did? Well, the Scripture says so. For Christ left us an example that you should follow in his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. We even refer to ourselves as Christians. Christ-like. Or like Christ. Christians is a, is a name that's thrown around very loosely today. Christian is somebody that's like Christ. They walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, live like Jesus, and love like Jesus. Some people say you can be a Christian and don't have any attributes of Christ. You just believe that He, that he is Christ and that's all you got to do. But that's not what the Scripture says. Is it? He that saith he uh, uh, loves Christ ought also to walk even as Christ walked. How can a man do it? Except the Lord be with you. Except the Lord give you power. When you receive the Holy Ghost, it feels good. A lot of people think that's all the Holy Ghost is. It's just to feel good. It helps you to pray better. It helps you to talk better. It helps you to sing better. They don't know that there's power in it. Matter of fact, they deny the power. When you say uh, it can help you overcome sin, they said, oh no. There ain't enough power in the Holy Ghost to overcome sin. God knows that. You, you just love Him and believe in Him. And when you leave this world, you'll just go to heaven and He'll give you power then. He'll take all sin away from you then. He'll, he'll reach down there when you die with sin, sin ridden life. And you resurrect. God will reach down there and just pull that root and branch out that Peter spoke of. He'll just pull it out and there won't be no more sin left in you and you'll be a perfect person. Do you think it happens that way? Do you think that you can die in sin, <laughs> resurrect, and no sin? You just leave it in the grave. You die a horse and resurrect a cow, Brother Pat used to say. <laughs> He said, as a tree falls, so shall it rise. The way you die is the way you come up. That's why we're interested in getting some, some things settled. Some men said, follow, follow, go before unto judgment. In other words, they're taken care of. Some men said, they follow that. So the Apostle Paul, he, he fought a good fight. Well, why was he fighting if there wasn't nothing to do? He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. What, what course is he talking about? I've kept the faith. If you confess that Jesus is the Son of God, you're saved from then on. According to Calvin, Calvinistic doctrine. But... but I'm interested in what the Word of God says. What do we have to do after we meet the Lord? Nothing? We don't do nothing? Just tell more people, get more people to confess that Jesus is Lord? I appreciated Brother Samson the other day when he came by, a statement he made. He said, we're not out to make, to make uh, converts. We're out to make disciples. A disciple is a disciplined one. And that means they have order in their life. An overcomer is somebody that has, has an order, ordered and disciplined life. And 
disciple, the disciple of Christ. So Paul said in Colossians, the third chapter, if you then be risen, and he's speaking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you that were dead in trespasses and sin, raised to walk in newness of life. If you been, then be risen, born again with Christ, seek those things which are above. There's something above that we're to seek. What's above? Our Father. God is above. Jesus is above. Their ways are above the ways of this world. The wisdom of God is far above the wisdom of man. It's as far as heaven is above the earth, it said, and who can know it? That's a from above. I can tell you who can know it. God's children can know it. Man cannot know the wisdom of God. They cannot comprehend. The carnal mind is an enmity against God. Cannot understand the things of God. But if you've got a spiritual mind, you can understand the things of the Lord. He can enlighten you. He can cause the spirit of knowledge and wisdom and understanding to begin to grow in your life. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, and precept upon precept. Set your, seek those things which are above, where Christ, where Christ, that's where it's above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Because we've got a great high priest which can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. I know it, and most of the time when we refer to that, we're referring to if you're sick, go talk to him. Go talk to him. And he can help you. But what if it's sin ridden soil? Sin sick. What if, what if it's a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding, a lack of wisdom? We've got a great high priest where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And you can go to him. He said, he that wants wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally and upbraideth not. He'll give it to us. Seek him. said, seek for wisdom as for hid treasure. Christ is the wisdom of God. Seek for him. And seek for his knowledge and his understanding. He made it through. said, he was... Paul said in Hebrews, he was the forerunner. Mm -hmm. A forerunner is one that runs before others. Mm -hmm. And he went before us, said, because he's 2,000 years ago. They've been a lot of runners since between Christ and now that made it across the finish line. Paul said, I finished. <laughs> he went across the finish line. We're still running in the race, aren't we? So, Lord, we seek you yes. to seek him, to set our hearts for him. Set your heart, set your affection, set your attention, your love on things above. And that things above, again, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Not on things on the earth. You can, the things above this world. Don't set your affections on things on this world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Lord, help us to get our affections right. Our love, what we love, what we hold dearest. For you're dead. That means you're, you're dead from your old life, the old man. And ye are hid, and your life is hid, are buried with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Then Paul gives some instructions. As the great master builder, mm -hmm. as the great apostle to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. mortify, in other words, put to death. Get rid of it. Do away with it. Put it off. Don't get it no more. You mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. 
In other words, those works of the flesh that's, that's uh, contrary to God. And they're contrary to you if you don't realize it. Mortify, put to death, therefore your members which are upon the earth, and now he listens. These are things that you do physically. Some things you do just thinking, feeling. These are things that you do. Fornication. We're not, it's not to be named among God's children. Uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which same things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. I don't want to be a disobedient child, do you? Lord, help us to be obedient, not disobedient. Help us to have an order and discipline in our life. For which the things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. He's telling them this is how you live before you come to the Lord and you're not to live like that after you come to the Lord. There's to be a change in your life. You're to seek things that's higher. Not think, seek things in this world. Not seek after them. Set your affections on things above. Not on things on the earth. And now, also, He's adding. <laughs> he didn't stop there. No. Yeah, Paul, Paul knew there was more to be said. And he couldn't say it all at one time, but it's here a little and there a little, but this is one of the littles. <laughs> he added it in. It seemed like a whole bunch, really. Yes. Quite, a, quite a bit in just a little book of Colossians. But now ye also mortify thee Mortify these also. Put them off. Put off these. Anger. It's been mentioned in the last few services. And thoughts on anger. Anger is an emotion. You may never carry it out. But just having anger in your heart is enough to kill you. You may never kill anybody else. You may never slap them in the face, poke them in the eye, whatever you anger about, but it's enough to kill you. If those ones were deeds, this is just feelings. The very thoughts and intents of the heart. Christ came and he said, Thou shalt not kill, but I say unto you, don't hate nobody. He magnified the law. In the law, you could hate somebody all you wanted to as long as you didn't kill them. Put off all these. Anger. Wrath. And wrath is just stored up anger. Rage. What it is. Malice is a desire to hurt. Desire to hurt somebody. God help us never... Become angry with somebody that you want to hurt them. Christ never hurt nobody. He got angry because they, the insensitivity, I used that, showed that verse last night in Mark 3 and 5. He was angry, but he didn't hurt them people. He hated that they were in a condition and that they, they themselves were captive by sin. Jesus healed the, with the withered man's hand, and they hated him for it. They, they, they didn't praise him. They didn't say thank you for healing our brother. They wanted some way to, to accuse him, and that grieved, grieved Christ's heart. True anger, and anger for a Christian has to come along with grief. Grief has to be in your heart. You're grieved over, over the condition of people. And most people anger, the world's anger is you did something to make me mad and that man just started burning down on the inside that it got to be a man. Something you can't turn loose of. Something that just burns inside of it. Yes. 
You know, somebody cuts you off and you honk your horn, you get mad. Well, 10 minutes later, you don't even know who that person is. You, you forget about it, it's gone. That man just, but if it, if it festers, it's like a sore. The fever sets in. Infection sets in. In your soul. That's what anger is. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Blasphemy is slander. Filthy communication out of your mouth. And we're not to have filthy communication out of our mouth. Let all things be done decent and in order. God help us. God help us to be true Christians. When I started in the race, I wanted to be true blue. I wanted to be a real Christian. Not a make-believe Christian, not a, not a weekend warrior, you know, back in our day. During the Vietnam War, they had soldiers. They, they were 24 7 soldiers. They were over in the jungle fighting that. And they didn't have to go. I'm glad of that. I know some that did, and, and it really affected them in a bad way. But they had the uh, National Guard. They'd only be soldiers on the weekend. Back then, they didn't deploy them overseas. And just here. And they call them weekend warriors. Well, that term got to be thrown around for Christians. Christians being weekend warriors. They served the Lord on Sunday, but six days a week they served their self. They served sin. And they'd come in and, you know, their work. I talked to the guys through the years trying to get them to come. One of my Asked him, I said, you know, why don't you come and be a church with us? He said, ah. He said, that stuff is just much fun. He said, I played, and he did, he could. He played music in the bars. And he said, the deacons from all them different churches said they'd come out there and they're drinking and partying with me on Saturday night. And he said, Sunday morning they're sitting in the pews. He said, I'm just as good as they are. And I thought, well, you may be better than they are. Because you ain't pretending to be a Christian. You ain't dragging Christ's name through the mud. But I said, well, then why don't you come and help us do it right? <laughs> well, he, he just didn't do it. But, but people can be offended by make-believe Christians. That's one thing Mahatma Gandhi said. I have no problem with your Christ. This is quoted from him. And he said, I don't have any problem with your Christ. He said, I just have a problem with your Christians. Because they don't live the way your Christ says live. That is a shame against Christianity. Muslims bring the same, same charges. Because down... During the Dark Ages, especially during the time of the, the wars at Jerusalem, there was wars fought in the name of Christianity against Muslims. And so they just see Christians as being a bunch of heathens. Murderers. Killers. Because that, they've never really heard a message. They've never seen, they've never seen the body of Christ. They've never seen a true Christian. If, if all you see is false face Christians, I wouldn't have anything to do with it. But thank God I've seen true Christianity. I've seen true people that really love God and serve the Lord their whole life. From the time they met Him to the time they died, they were faithful. Some people want to focus on failures. People that, that said they found a God and after a while, they forsake him and live ungodly. They focus on that. But I want to focus on the true blue Christian. The false Christianity, false religion outweighs the church many times over. Broad is the gate 
Wide is the way that goes into destruction. Said the heart it is a deep ditch and a, and a, a narrow pit. The one place it said it's a broad way. The way to her house is a broad way. Many there be that go in there and know not that the dead are there, her guests are in the depths of hell, but the other one, the straight and narrow gate, the straightest gate narrows the way that leads into life, few there be that find it. Put off all of these, lie not one to another, seeing you put off, what do you put off? The old man, with his deed, Now there, Paul's getting down where the rubber meets the road. Peter said water baptism is just an answer of that clear conscience towards God, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. This is the putting away of the filth of the flesh. You mortify it. You put it to death. You put off the, the, the damning nature of the old man with his deeds. Don't tell me you put off the old man when his deeds is there. When the deeds is gone, so how do I know when my old man is dead? When the deeds are all gone. And then put on. See, there's more to do than just getting out of the sin business. Put on the new man. That, that, that's fashioned after Christ. Put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. We're fashioned in the image of our Lord and Savior. Put on the new man love and joy and peace, fruits of the Spirit, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. We're renewed in knowledge. We need to just keep keep repeating these things. Keep hearing these things. Keep reading these things. Keep singing these things. Keep testifying about these things. Keep preaching these things. Renewed in knowledge. You ever stop, you start sliding back. If you don't give the earnest heed, you lose them. Put on the new man. That that was risen with Christ. You've been the grizzly of Christ. The new man. The subject here is the old man and the new man. Start it off. If you've been the grizzly of Christ, Brother David, that's the new man, born again. <clears throat> Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. Don't blame nationality. body of Christ is for everybody. It don't matter what nationality you are, whether Greek or Jew. It don't matter what kind of Greek you are. Gentile. It don't matter what kind of Gentile you are. Circumcision or uncircumcision. Barbarian, Scythian, bond, or free. But Christ is all and in all. Thank God. Isn't that wonderful? That Christ is in all. Yes. That means he's in all that comes to him. You can't say, well, I'm an Irishman. He won't have nothing to do with me. You know, I'm a German. I don't have no hope. They've been kind of mean people. Actually, it wasn't a German in World War II. It was hijacked by Adolf Hitler, and he wasn't even German. But the Germans sure did their part in it. So... I'm not holding it for Germans now. Do I? <laughs> They're just carnal. They're all carnal. All nationalities yes. come from that. But Christ is all. He's all in all. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. We need him. We need him more. We need more of him and less of us. More of you, Lord, and less of me. Put on. Hadn't that put on again? In other words, take it as your nature. Live your life. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. This is the group on Mount Zion. They have a heart of compassion. They have the spirit of charity. It's 
Spirit of Christ, the divine nature of God, seven spirits of God. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, so that it is not puffed up, neither doesn't behave itself unseemly. Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Now he's telling what we what we're to become after we get rid of the old man, you gotta be something. You take on the attributes of the new man, which is a child of God. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Christ taught the parables. He that forgiveth much, loveth much. A man owed thousands and thousands of dollars. And he went to the man he owed it to and said, I don't have it. He could have sold him into and all his possessions, but he said, I forgive you. And then that, that man that was forgiven went out and found the man that just owed him a, a few cents. <laughs> Grabbed him by the throat and said, you're going to pay me every penny. I'm going to cast you into prison. When the master heard it, what that wicked servant did. See, he had been forgiven much, but he wouldn't forgive a little. He said, you're going to be thrown into prison until you pay the other most farthing, and it was death. The sentence was death. Without God, it's death. So, if any have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, above all this that I've said, above all that I've spoken right here, above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Charity is the ability to love the unlovable. Charity is that bond of perfectness that binds us together to make the body of Christ. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let God be the ruler. You don't try to be the king of your own life. Don't let some, something else rule you. Know ye not that to whomsoever ye yield yourself servant to obey, his servant ye are to whom ye obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Don't let sin rule over you. Don't let the old man rule over you. Let Christ rule over you. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be, be ye thankful. Lord, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Why me? Why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one of the, these blessings that I've done? Why, Lord? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You could have chose somebody else. You, you could have raised up somebody else. You could have called somebody else. You could have touched somebody else. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God, you're so merciful and so good. Yes, he is. Thank you for loving me. We sung that song. Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. I tell you what, you cry with a humble cry, he'll come running to you. Like the father to that prodigal son. Pass me not, O oh, Savior. Oh, gentle, gentle Savior. The problem is, I have found in my lifetime, it's not God passing us by, but it's us passing Him by. Ignoring Him. Ignoring what He wants, what He said. Ignoring how He, he can rebuke you without ever saying a word. You can just feel the Holy Ghost telling you, don't do that. Lord, me and, God, and you don't listen. Lord, don't let me pass you by. Don't let me pass you by. Ever, ever let my be mind, my mind be vigilant and sober, looking for you, listening for you, heeding the call. 
listening to your voice when you call out to it. And God will not pass me by. He didn't. You can sing that song, but I'm telling you, he ain't going to pass you by. You, you can sing that song and not have no feeling in it whatsoever. You're not even thinking about God. You're just saying words like it was a nursery rhyme or something. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. I tell you, Brother Lane Group could make it. That's not how he did it. Yes, no white in the seven world. But, but I, I tell you, when you sing, sing from your heart. Sing with the Spirit, sing with the understanding. And that's all in the seven spirits of God, the understanding and the Spirit. Healing from the Lord. Do you think? Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Be rich. Be rich in the Word of the Lord. Be rich in the knowledge of God. Be rich in the understanding of the Lord. You're, you're in a gold mine. God's let you find a gold mine of riches. Say, Daniel, we didn't, I didn't even work in the heat of the day. My lineage goes back to 1964 when I was born again, when I, when I became a new man. And all them years, from 1914 to, to 1964, should be a heat of numbers, 1914 to 1964, 50 years, 50 years, 50 years of labor for God's ministry. And I got to get those gold nuggets and those precious things. Let it dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing. Who? Who do we teach? Who do we admonish? One another. In songs, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing. Woo! Thank God with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I love the way we have church. I love community. I love the way we worship. Could we do it better? Probably so. Could we be more sincere and put more into it? Probably so. Could God do more? I don't think God could do it. He probably did all he knows that he needs to do. He's not holding back any. If anybody's holding back, it's us. He desires, he said, I, I'm more willing to give than you are to receive. Lord, help us to be more willing to receive. He'll give us more if we're willing to receive. Help us, Lord, to be willing. <laughs> and whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, you know, he, some of them in words, in thoughts, some of them was in actions. And he listed here in the beginning. Fornication is a deed. Anger is a thought. Whatever you do in word or deed. Kindness, humbleness, forbearing one another. There's some things that we do that we're supposed to do. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of of the Lord Jesus. Water baptism is in the name of Jesus when it's properly offered. I just added that in. That's the water baptism is. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him.
the church of today, much in every way. For unto us was committed the word of the Lord. The Lord God. But to us was given the word of the Lord. A whole generation I got to see, preach, teach, live, and serve God. And they're all dead and gone. But all oh, their deposits in our world, in my life, in your life. The things I'm saying today is things that those men say. You know, I don't quote them verbatim every time I speak and say, Brother Smith said this, Brother Garland said that, Brother Patty said this, Brother Sauter said that, Brother Hugh said this. Sometimes I do quote them, sometimes I don't quote them, I just say what they say. Lord, ever help us. Ever help us. We are God to seek you with all our hearts. And to stand before you with a clean slate at the end of the day. If there's anything there, wipe that slate clean before you go to bed. Start off every day new. Asking the Lord to give assistance in doing his work. 